Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So we're continuing with our document preparation using LaTeX second edition video series. This is part two, which is creating your first document. In part one, we studied how we could install the software and configure it uh, for our basic use. Today, what we're going to do is we are going to start with our first document. And for that, you are going to need to download the files for the demo. The link you can find in the description or if you have the access to it, you can find them on the lecture server as well. Uh, what you want to do is copy the folder and paste it so that you don't change the initial files we provided. And uh, after that, you want to start your Technic Center. This is the default screen that you get. You want to create a new file and save the file as first-doc. It doesn't matter what you call it as long as you remember what you named it, right? Just to give you an overview of the interface, uh, you have your standard toolbars, you have your navigator here, you have your main editor window over here, and down here you have the output window which includes the build, finds, parse, all the different things and uh, what you want to do is basically get rid of this output window initially so that you can have the maximized uh, editor window and to get rid of that all you need to do is hit the escape key so we have this basic document here and we've saved it in the demo1-end folder right here and what we're going to do is start with defining our document class what we're trying to do is write an article and in order to define your output you need to start with an environment called document this begin and end block basically defines an environment that's what later calls it and within that you define the contents of this environment so our environment is called document and we are going to define what the contents of the document are going to be you'll notice that these slashes slash commands are being turned to blue that's because the technic center recognizes these as latex commands latex commands begin with slash and to start a new environment you give the command slash begin and in the parentheses you give the environment's name and you end the environment using the slash end command. We'll cover more of the commands as we go along. So the first command that we see is the title command and you can define your document's title here. My first LaTeX document. Now remember that there is a difference between creating things in output uh, in LaTeX and generating outputs from them for them in some cases whatever you type here is going to be output automatically for example if I type something here it's going to be output automatically but there are some commands which do not produce output as side effect title is one of those commands just by writing slash title or issuing this command what you're doing is defining what the title of the document is it will not be printed onto the document for that we are going to have to use the slash make title command you will notice that there is no parameter parameter to the make title command because it doesn't need any uh, you can define the author using the slash author command again the slash author command does not output anything it just defines who the author is uh, you have this basic document and it's going to work if we generate the output in order to do that what you want to do is first of all come over here and define select the output profile and we want the output profile to be PDF because we don't want to create a DVI, we want to create a PDF output file. So our profile is going to be LaTeX to PDF. Select that and select this button, build current file or control F7. Click on that once and notice that the output window has come back. You can see all of the output that LaTeX has produced, you can read through it if you want the important thing is the last line zero errors zero warnings zero byte boxes and one pages as we expected if you want to view the file you can click on this view output or hit f5 and it will load your pdf file in your pdf viewer as you can see 
the document has been properly formatted the title has been uh, center lined it has been uh, made larger the author name is there date has been inserted automatically uh, and there's something the word that we wrote has been inserted in the output now some of the other commands we want to start the uh, abstract in order to define the abstract you have to start and end the begin and end the abstract environment we're going to bring this dummy text and paste it over here um, you will notice the squiggly line that we discussed in the last video and notice that there is a line break after the word mobile in this the domain of the mobile and we are going to save the file build it and view it you will notice that the abstract has been properly aligned and there is no line break anywhere to be seen right? so capabilities of mobile there is no line break there that's because latex recognizes every white space character as the same the only difference between different white space characters is an empty line so an empty line basically defines a new paragraph other than that any white space character is treated the same single space so if you include an empty line that is going to turn it into a separate paragraph as you can see let's hit escape again to get rid of the output and write some more stuff to start a new section in your document you want to issue the section command and define the section title in the parameter to the command Similarly, to define a subsection, you type subsection. And you have the sub subsection command. Right. You can use the this button here, build and view current file, or use the control shift F5 command to easily build and view the output notice the difference in headings the difference in font size and the outline numbering that has been automatically inserted by LaTeX so that is one of the strengths of LaTeX notice the output produced here and the source of the file that we have over here you will notice we have not defined anything related to font sizes bullets numbering any of those things justification latex does that automatically for you and this is one of the strengths of latex it helps you concentrate on what you're trying to say instead of what it's going to look like um, another thing that this editor provides you technic center is the ability to view the hierarchy of your document so as you can see the navigator pane is empty right now that's because we have not defined a project if you define a project we get a lot of uh, benefits so let's go ahead and do that go to the project menu and click on create with active file as main file you get a window in which you define the main file so our first doc is our main file you want to use BibTeX usually because BibTeX is what handles bibliographies you can select the language English uh, we'll select and hit OK notice that we ha now have an outline here you can double click on the on any of the uh, sections here and your mouse pointer will scroll over there you can define new sections and as soon as you save the file you will see that the navigator pane has updated now what we want to do is cover some of the more commands after this let's save the file and create a new section So we're creating a little figure now. We can input the commands 
by hand but I'm just going to show you how to insert a figure using the IDE because it's going to make your life much more easier so you go to insert menu you go and click on pictures now you need to give it a file now it's highly recommended that you give the file in a vector format such as PDF or EPS if you are going to generate a PDF as output you should give it a PDF file as a figure uh, we'll try and cover how to create these uh, PDF images sometime later in the video series but for now let's just uh, take a look at this ATT models base figure it's a, it's a very simple PDF which only shows a um, three-part figure so it doesn't matter where this PDF came from as long as you have it you can use it to uh, include a figure in your document so you click on that and click on open you can give it an inflation which basically tells it what the height is going to be so it's going to be a hundred percent of the text width it's going to be centered horizontally and it's going to be inserted as a float which basically means it's going to float around the page to a position that is most suitable you can give it a caption and you can give it a label which we can uh, later use to refer to this document you can if you're creating a two column uh, document you can have this figure expand to both columns for now let's just keep it at one column notice the code that has been inserted by Technic Center so it's a figure environment because it starts and ends using the begin and end uh, commands it's centering because it's going to be centered on the page and this include graphics is basically what takes this PDF and embeds it in your uh, in your document the width is going to be one of uh, factor of one of the whole text width so you can reduce it to 0.95 so it's going to be 95 percent of the text width your caption is my first figure and your label is going to be fig ATT models base now when we try to compile this document now it's going to give us an error okay, so let's uh, try to compile it using either build current file or since we now have a project we can use it use the build output uh, command to build the output and as you will see it's giving an error three errors in fact so how do you find out what the errors are you go here and click on the next error button or the F9 so it says undefined control sequence include graphics so this include graphics this command that we've given that is undefined which basically means that it depends on a package well it basically means that you've either made a typo or it depends on a package that has not been included remember the style files that we discussed in the first uh, lecture that we have to describe here use package and the package that describes this command is graphics graphic x so you have to know where that command comes from if you don't know where the include graphics command uh, command comes from or uh, any other command then you can just google it and you will figure it out so we now try to build it again and you will notice that we now have zero pages of output so something went wrong but we don't have any error so we want to go back and look at this aha that's the error you see PDF letter GUI framework could not be initialized now it doesn't sound like a very intuitive error uh, error message but uh, that's something that we wanted to cover in this uh, lecture anyway that is uh, that requires uh, a single change to the MCTEC package manager setting for that you need to go to your MCTEC settings which you can find in MCTEC 2.9 maintenance and settings program now that's a bug so you just have to live with this but in the package installation uh, pane you want to install missing packages on the fly you want to say no over here you have to say no and you click on apply and okay now we're going to try to build this again and this time we are going to get an error so well actually we don't get an error but 
if a package was missing then we would have received an error over here so we'll try to build this again and you will notice that the error has gone away we try to view the file again and notice that the figure has now been incorporated in your document one thing that you should note is that we did not include the file the the, Im the image or the figure at this location we included it over here but it has floated to the top and that is what the float environment basically means that we uh, talked about a little earlier so if you want to include the figure exactly where you've put it you need to pass it an argument which is exclamation mark h and h basically means try very hard to place the document over here h is for here or you can tell it that you should try very hard to place it at the top then at the bottom then finally here so if it can place it at the top of the page it will try to do that otherwise it will try to put it at the bottom of the page if not then it will try to place it here so let's try with here and let's build and view the output again and notice that the figure has now moved to the hair location that's not really recommended the your figures should float either to the top or to the bottom at least to a side of the page but that is an option that you should be aware of in case you need it let's get rid of that for the moment and try to do something else so that's something that is going to be a table and if you want to insert a table uh, it's a little more complicated but we uh, we're going to insert a tabular environment again you can go to the insert menu go to the tabular menu uh, tabular uh, option insert the caption again you have similar options and you click on ok notice that it has in now inserted a table environment it has inserted your caption for you and it has inserted the label as well the problem is that you have uh, no hints provided by the IDE as to how you can create the table so we're going to do that over here you want a let's say you want a four uh, column table so you write L L L L so those are your four columns and the L stands for left justified and C stands for center line so you have four columns the first one is going to be left uh, left aligned and the other three are going to be centralized you want a line at the leftmost end of the table you want a line at the rightmost end of the table and you want a line between the first and the second columns so that is how you define uh, the lines for the table i know it's complicated but that's the way it is in layer now we want to insert some headings so heading head one and that separates the columns um, and we're going to have head 2 and head 3 and head 4 right to create a new row you enter the slash slash command so that creates a new row for you one again line the uh, white spaces do not matter but just for readability we are making them this way so let's build them again, build this file again, and let's hope we don't get an error. We don't. So let's go ahead and view what the table looks like. You'll notice the line here, and here, and at the extreme right, and that is what we defined in our document over here. So a line at either end of the leftmost column and one at the extreme right of the table so that is what we have but you'll notice that the top line the middle line and the line between the rows are missing so to insert those you need to insert a slash h line at the start a slash h line at the very end and a slash h line between both of the rows and we view that again and you'll notice that the table is going to be much better now exactly what you want if you want lines between these two all you need to do is insert a pipe character between these C's and that should take care of your table so it's 
fairly easy to create a simple table when you get more complex tables you're going to have to refer to some other documentation because we're not going to cover that over here but notice that this is left aligned and all three of these are center aligned so that's how you create a table in latex another thing that you should notice over here is that the similar to these numberings for the headings numberings for the figure and table have been automatically inserted by LaTeX. But what happens when you want to try to uh, refer these in your document? Let's say we have some text here that wants to refer to table 1. Now because we can move tables around this one can change and that is where the slash ref commands in comes in. You can use this label tab colon my first table copy it over here and paste it in the slash ref command so what this this is going to do is resolve this reference for the label and insert the number that it resolves to you have to write this table over here because uh, the ref command only returns the number and not the whole table one uh, caption so that is how you get the uh, reference to the table you can also refer to the uh, figure that we just inserted and you can type slash ref and here you can type fig colon and you'll notice the little tooltip that comes up over here so you can start with that name and hit control plus space and it will automatically expand it for you so that's uh, a handy tool to be aware of you can use control space for uh, automatic expansion of your uh, references, citations, all of the things that we'll uh, see in the future as well. It also expands commands and environments by the way. So you might want to look at that as well. So let's build that again and see what happens. Taking a little bit of time. It won't with your system, it's just my system is a little slower at the moment. So we have two pages again and it should now load the document. and behold you have table 1 and figure 1 so it doesn't matter where these figures and tables float around to they are still going to be referred properly by LaTeX so that is how you can insert tables and figures and cross-reference them you can also cross-reference different sections and that is what we're going to do right now To refer to different sections you first need to define their labels so just after the slash section command you can say slash label and give it a label sec colon background so you now have a section for this label a label for this section sorry and you have another label over here what you can do now is come over here and when you want to refer to a previous section or a future section you can use the slash ref command again um, section ref sec colon and hit control space and since you need to save the file first uh, hit sec colon control space and you will see that you get both of these sections labeled over here that is why we have this sec colon prefix it's not required by latex but it makes our job much more easier if we have these prefixes so my convention is i use tab for tables fig for figures and sec for sections so section background and section drill down and you can build that again but just to show you another thing uh, in the meanwhile 
you'll notice that we are trying to output a command over here and because LaTeX is going to evaluate this command it's not going to produce the correct output what we want to do is tell LaTeX that this is to be output verbatim i.e. not evaluated so for that we use the slash verb command and verb command is a little different because it treats everything that comes after it as a as a um, as an output so you need to define a delimiter over here and an ending delimiter over here so that is the syntax of uh, verb command if you don't understand it, it doesn't really matter because it's highly unlikely you're going to be using a uh, verb command because we'll be covering some alternatives to this verb command in the future but that is how you can output commands very easily verb pipe pipe and within those two pipes you define whatever command you want to output so let's rebuild it and do the output so you'll notice that both of these sections have a question mark next to it the reason is that latex basically when it uh, runs for the first time it creates an aux file an auxiliary file the top level auxiliary file the whole location slash first dash doc dot aux and we need to compile this a couple of times in order to get LaTeX to read the aux file properly and to insert all of these uh, references in their correct locations. So after building it a couple of times, three at the most, you get these proper section references. You will notice that it has section two properly for background and for the other section drill down it is going to give you 1.1.1. So it gives you proper references. So it makes referencing different sections really really easy for you also notice the slash ref in a different font in a uh, typewriter font and it has not been evaluated it has simply been output by latex so that is uh, all about referencing different sections what you need to remember is give it give these sections labels and use them as slash ref and build the file a couple of times before trying to see the output and that should work one last thing that we want to do in this video is to include other files in order to structure our document if let's say you were creating a whole thesis and you were to write the whole thesis in this one text file it would be very difficult to manage so what you want to do is separate all the different chapters into on into different files of their own for example we have this sub file over here and we can load it in our IDE and you'll notice that it only has a subsection command and some text in it nothing else you see there is nothing else so that is all there is in this file and what we want to do is input this file or include this file into our document at some location let's say after this location all we have to do is slash input and the file name minus the extension so if I write slash input sub file it's going to go ahead find sub file in the current folder and take the whole contents of that and simply insert them over here at runtime so if you save it you will notice that subsection through some input command has shown up in the navigator pane as well so the IDE is smart enough to figure out what inputs there are and go in and get the document structure from over there as well so you build it again and you will notice that the subsection through input command has now been incorporated properly using the whole numbering just as it was typed just as if it was typed in this location some of the other things that you might want to look at before uh, our next video is this objects pane so you have figures my first figure that we included you have your table my first table you can double click it and click on it to go over here you have your files so you have your uh, tech file your sub file when you get your web tech files you get them over here and you have your ATT models based on PDF file that we've included you can also have references but they will show up when we do our bibliographies in the next video in sharp stay tuned